we built this log cabin together and the tiny house too, we just do everything together. We really built this cabin from scratch. I mean, when I say from scratch, we just go in the forest and harvest the trees. We chose the old trees that were either dying or in the way of another more healthy tree. So we really try to be smart about that. So we don't just cut everything. After that, we bring them with the tractor here and it was just log everywhere. And Noemi spent all the summer to debark, debark it and the summer was really dry and really hot so it was a really big job actually. Mm -hmm. Actually it was the biggest one of everything. Yeah. And we used around 40 to 50 big logs to do this cabin and with the, the leftovers we did everything else basically. We milled the wood and we mm -hmm. did the cabinetry, we did the table, we did Everything that you see here, we built it with leftover of those 50 trees. Mm -hmm. And we burned the leftover wood three years to eat this cabin. <laughs> it was kind of amazing how much a tree can, can give in energy and resources and everything. So yeah, we learned a, a lot about it. The cabin is around 600 square foot. Mm. So it's not big, but it's not small. It's just perfect for us. Yeah, yeah. And mm. that includes the three floors. So we lived in this cabin now for five years. I was uh, looking up like different type of housing and I was daydreaming about uh, building a house from my own hands and everything. And then when we met, I saw that he was a really skilled uh, craftsman and it made like two plus two in my head and I was like, yeah, we should build something together, that would be nice. We were living in an apartment at that time and we were just not happy with how our life was going. We knew from the start that we needed to make our own paths. So we started planning for getting out of the apartment and then building something. At first we built a tiny house because it was the only option that we can do because we have basically no money at that time. Mm. So we just search for material on the side of the road and just find everything. And we just live there for around five years and we really love it. But we soon realized that it's a, a space that it's really amazing to live, but it was too small to make art and uh, me for doing projects and everything. It was not really adapted for that, so we just decided to build this cabin. It was the land of my father before he passed away, so it was his legacy for us and it was his dream to build a log cabin one day. He was waiting for his retirement and he died the years of his retirement, so yeah. he just cannot do any of his dreams, so we just find a way and it worked. So we have this idea to use the timber of the forest because again, we didn't have a lot of money and the old building supply that was on the old cottage that was basically rotten away, but we could manage to save, salvage a good part of it. To build this house, we take maybe seven months of summer here. We managed to finish the house and come live in it. So it was super quick and it was a big rush. Yeah, but it was definitely if we had to do it again, we would take it a bit more slowly. But mm -hmm. we had the, I don't know, the, the fire in us like to create something really quick so we could start living our, our dream life, basically. Yeah. Yeah, so when you enter the house, you have the bathroom, which is a very small corner of the house and we, we function with the composting toilet. But recently we actually downgrade to an outhouse just because we like the outhouse more actually than having a bathroom in here. It makes us walk outside. <laughs> so uh, we have also all the more of the tech part of the house, like the on-demand water heater, which is uh, uh, functioning with propane. 
Then we have also all the water pump and everything tucked away into a counter. Then we have the kitchen. Uh, we really wanted to have like an open space type of kitchen. So we use uh, the counter and also the table as part of the working places. And uh, we have the pantry with all the like the dried goods and everything. Rémi is a woodworker, so he built with the, his lovely assistant <laughs> the, the counter with uh, trees from the land here, also all the cabinet trees. We didn't buy a lot of stuff, actually. We, we tried to make most of the things that we have in the house. So I did like all the little baskets for the, the utensils and a lot of our everyday objects. We both do things from from scratch, trying to salvage uh, everything that we can. We have the propane stove and full-size fridge, uh, which was a very uh, ugly yellow before, so I decided to paint on top of it. And also the wall behind us here. So the living room and dining area is like one space, basically. Uh, we use the table as an office and as well as a dining place and also a chilling spot when we have friends uh, to play games and, and all that. Then uh, we have our couch that we salvaged once again for very cheap. Then when we go up, we have the bedroom area. So there's one bedroom for my daughter and one bedroom for us. And our main goal with these spaces was that it could be uh, very small since we just use it for sleep basically and also to store our clothes. So we included drawers and uh, we tried to really think about how the space would be designed so it would be more minimal yeah. and uh, everything is tucked away and nice. <laughs> Then the ladder goes up to my art studio, which uh, is a very cozy space. I really like it. And uh, yeah, I paint most of my paintings there. I can see all the, all the land around the house and I can watch the river and it's very inspiring to see the nature there. Mm. The house is heated mainly with the wood stove, so we don't really use the electric backup heater. We just have it in case we go away, like we, we went traveling for a whole winter and then the house, the pipe didn't freeze. We have a well on the property and we use that water for the running water, for the faucet and for the inside shower too. And for the power here, we use this hydro that is the main electricity source of the Quebec uh, provinces. We would have considered solar actually, but since the, all, everything was set up here for, for hydroelectricity, it was the most eco-friendly way to have the power in the mm -hmm. house. We just hooked up the, basically on, on the grid. This year we started to build the greenhouse, which is attached to our house. And there's a big water tank, which will eventually collect all the rainwater from the roof, because we have big surface there. So uh, this will be the water tank that will uh, water all the plants and everything. And we built stone raised beds. And in the greenhouse, we will also have a big wardrobe just for having our like outdoor gear and things like that that we don't want to sacrifice space in the house so yeah that will be the storage slash um, food growing space or just another like summer living room it's gonna be a nice space to just be <laughs> yeah We definitely have the plan to be more self-sufficient here on the property. It's like we want to have big gardens since uh, vegetables and legumes are our main staples. And we want to be able to uh, do like canning and also like drying, preserving as much as possible. So one of our next project might be to build a cellar actually. So it's uh, another part of the dream, the, another piece of the, the puzzle. So we will put more energy into that in the next uh, coming years. Wow. 
at first that kind of lifestyle was a dream like amusing house and beautiful garden and self-sufficient with food and everything but we soon realized that we cannot do everything at once and I think we realized that it was harder than we thought we, we need to take time it's like yeah. a long process so now we just slow down a little bit I guess it's a quality that, that we share but it's also our biggest flaw is yeah. that we're very passionate people so and action people so we Like we do the things, you know, but sometimes we need to slow down mm. both of us a little bit and be more patient. <laughs> Living this lifestyle is not really easy. It's pretty hard if I can say the truth. <laughs> <laughs> so when we are in shape and everything, it's pretty simple and easy for us to do everything. Mm. But I think the thing that is really hard is when we are sick and we need to plow the road or mm. need to get the firewood, it's really hard. And if we don't do it, nobody will do it for us. So it's mm. like at this moment that it's pretty hard. The biggest challenge uh, for me since we moved here, I was diagnosed last year with uh, multiple sclerosis. And sometimes I have a crisis and basically this is a neurological disease that makes the signal between my brain and parts of my body like not communicating right with each other. So my legs doesn't function all the time. So it has become a challenge now that when I'm in a, in a crisis with MS, I cannot climb up the, the stairs and all the physical work that used to be very easy for me is not anymore. So I have to learn now to put energy only in the places that are really important for me and not like just spend it all, <laughs> basically. We are both working uh, on our own businesses. So I do, uh, I'm an artist, I'm a painter. And I'm also a tattoo artist, so uh, all my time basically is spent between tattooing people and creating art that I then sell. So this is my full-time job and uh, um, it's also my dream job and I'm really happy to do that. <laughs> and for me, since we built this house, I never stopped building for somebody else. So I soon realized that I really love to do ecological building and so I work on very different projects. During our journey we realized that we were learning a lot of different skills and we just wished that there were more people to share that type of knowledge like with the uh, eco buildings and everything. So we decided to document uh, all our, our projects and also the way we are living daily life. So uh, that motivated us to create our own YouTube channel. So we keep making videos now and uh, people can follow us through our multiple projects. Since we live in this house, the log house, we rent uh, our tiny house to friends for a long-term rent. So now we have somebody, Roxanne, that lived there for three years now. So we, we want to <laughs> to share this place and to make like a small community because it's a nonsense to have all the space for us alone mm -hmm. and it's a lot easier to share the space and to share the difficulty too. And what I love the most living here is for sure the calm. When mm -hmm. we go outside it's super calm and in the winter we can hear nothing. There's no, no sound around here and I love it. I think what I love the most about living here is the opportunity to uh, have a relationship with the land that I didn't have before. So uh, for us, like, it's not over yet. We're just in the beginning of a big process. The first year I wanted to be self-sufficient, wanted to like not produce waste, wanted to, everything, you know, but it doesn't work like that. It's like a small piece at a time. And each year we add more to that dream and the vision evolves with us. And I think it's really magical actually to just grow into this lifestyle, basically. Mm -hmm. We are a bit, like each year we are getting closer to our main goal. Yeah. yeah. Subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and please share this video if you liked it. 
You can also follow Remy and Noemi on their YouTube channel at The Wild Crafters. Thanks for watching.